I mean, we just got to get back to work. Nobody said it was going to be easy. So, I mean, I didn't sign up for easy. I kind of knew that when I, uh, when I got here. So here it is. Kenny, Chris Cartman, son of a source, um, eight turnovers. Um, you know, you had to, you know, Jaden couldn't play, went with the other two quarterbacks, both turned the football over, injuries. What, what was it like kind of going through that? And what, like, did it become sort of like just a blur of things that just kind of was going wrong? Or? Yeah, I've never in my career been involved in a game like that. Uh, dating back to, I mean, I literally couldn't even explain how that's even possible, but uh, we're gonna get it fixed. I'm gonna get it fixed. That's a that's a guarantee that I'm gonna get that fixed. Is it difficult to is it difficult to fix something that's hard to even kind of understand? Yeah, uh, I just think we have to be more consistent with where the ball needs to go. I think there needs to be a more direct plan on if you get this look, this is where the ball goes, and we should be able to see from the sideline exactly what's going to happen before it even happens. So uh, we got to do some work, uh, making sure everybody's on the same page, uh, and make sure that based off the defensive looks, because the reality is everything that we saw, they'd shown on tape multiple times uh, and was exactly, sadly enough, what we prepared for. So we got to be able to coach that better and make sure that our guys are not just taking the film room to the game, taking practice to the game and applying it on game day uh, at a higher rate. And that falls on me as the head coach. The natural follow-up to that would be uh, whether you take a different look at calling plays yourself or what, what might happen there. Yeah, I mean, we're going to try. We're going to get the offense fixed. I can tell you that. We're going to fix the offense. That's uh, that uh, I've never been a part of something like that. We're going to fix the offense. And uh, is it going to be fixed overnight? No. Is it going to? Are we going to be better? Yes. Uh, and I know our guys are disgusted by how we played. Uh, you know, our defense fought hard and battled eight turnovers, giving up 29 points. That's, re that's remarkable, to be honest. When you have eight turnovers and you give up 29 points, that is, it's, I mean, it's just one of the most incredible things I've ever been a part of. Uh, and if we would have just punted on offense, we probably would have had a better football game. Michelle Gardner, Arizona Republic. Kenny, can you clarify the quarterback situation? Um, did Drew Pine come out because he was ineffective, or did he aggravate the hamstring? No, he has another another injury. So uh, something other than that pulled him out of the game. Uh, we'll see how that. Trenton got pulled out, obviously, he, lower leg injury that uh, we're going to get some uh, an MRI on that we'll find out the severity. And then Drew came out for another muscular uh, injury on the same leg. So we'll figure out where that stands. Uh, so that was that was just unfortunate. Can you clarify, Jaden? Like, obviously yeah. not practicing all week. He was never really a consideration. Yeah, he's gonna be out. He's gonna uh, be out for about four to six weeks uh, right now. So he'll be out. We'll get him healthy, and uh, you know, six weeks left to go in the season. When you talk nine weeks, we'll probably try to make sure we keep his red shirt alive at that point because that's just not fair to him to play him in five games. So we'll do what we can from that standpoint to play him in four if needed. Uh, but the number one priority for him is to get healthy. Doug Franz, WTSMTV.com, and Doug Franz Unplugged. Question one, was Rashada's a game injury from previously, or was it a practice injury? It was kind of a combination. It's something that's been lingering for him uh, dating back to high school, and the game aggravated it. Uh, and then at that point, it was something that we, you know, I'm, we made a decision that this was best for him. And... Uh, Number two, since you've already hinted on it, defensively, they scored, Fresno State scored coming out of the first half, or first series, the first half, first series, second half. Now's their only touchdowns. You talk about loving the game. What did your defense show you football character-wise, football IQ-wise, to be able to hold only field goals? Yeah, I mean, they put in the work. They're passionate. They care. And we have great leadership. So those guys play because they love the game, and they play for each other, and it shows up. Uh, at a high level, and I, I'm I'm proud of how they're playing. I'm proud of their leadership, and uh, we just got to get you know offense rolling a little bit. And uh, I'm going to do everything in my power uh, this week uh, to to help that and uh, to fix that. Uh, 
Tia Reed, uh, Cronkite Sports Coach, you just talked about the effort that your defense showed, but in those short field situations, what did you see from them uh, schematically that you liked that helped hold them to just field goals? Yeah, I mean, one thing, you know, Coach Ward's very aggressive, and Coach Ward's going to constantly try to create pressure on the quarterback, and I think we did that tonight, especially when we got them into long yardage scenarios. I mean, at the end of the half, forcing an intention, we, we took a penalty. That way we could play third down again uh, instead of making it fourth down because I knew that fits into our defensive style. Forced them to make an intentional grounding, and we saved three points off the board. So that happened multiple times. Our defense just playing aggressive and playing with confidence. Uh, that got them off the field. Coach Michael Karras, you know, pitchfork lunch. To piggyback off that, I mean, I know Roe was a little frustrated after the Oklahoma State game because of a few calls, but I mean, just those two corner blitzes tonight, I know you said Coach Ward being aggressive, but just what did you see from Roe just making the reads and making those plays? Yeah, it was, uh, I mean, good scheme. One, one is, uh, you know, schematically it was getting them free. Uh, credit to the defense coaching staff and then uh, Roe making the play because it's one thing to be there and to call the right thing. It's another thing to execute and uh, make the play, and Roe Ro kept getting it done. So I was proud of him. He responded really well to uh, last week's game uh, for him, and he played a really nice game today. Hey, Kenny Jake, Seymour, Sun Double Source. You talked about kind of fixing the offense and wanting to start off with that, uh, but how difficult do you imagine that's going to be uh, you know, with three of your four scholarship quarterbacks um, you know, potentially injured? Yeah, I mean, I, I, I can't worry about any of that. I can worry about the guys that are going to practice on Monday and then practice on Tuesday, practice on Wednesday, play on Saturday. That's it. I mean, I can, I can sit up here and come, oh, we're down 6-0 linemen. We're down four. What does that do? That's a horrible message to the football team. We're going to do whatever we can to score points. I'm going to do everything in my power. Coach, Caleb Campero, Devil's Digest. What's the message like to a bunch of college guys in the huddle, one turnover after another, there's obviously frustration, like a lot of us feel. You know, what's the message like to just kind of rally them when a third quarterback's in the game and you just can't find the rhythm? You know, what's that message like after every drive or after some of these guys are just walking off the field shaking their heads? Keep fighting. What are you going to do? Are you going to quit? Like, that was the one thing that I will say we didn't do. Our team didn't quit. I mean, we didn't have the result we wanted. Well, we didn't end up scoring, which would have been nice, but we didn't quit. Our kids didn't quit, right? Our kids kept playing, and that's what we're trying to achieve here is we're trying to get guys to play hard, play with passion and care. And uh, like I told them in the locker room is uh, how we played is unacceptable on one side of the ball. It's the worst I've ever been around in my entire career. But the effort and the intent was in the direction that we're trying to go. And this, the situation we're in, is not ideal. But once again, who cares? We're, we got to find a way. And like I said, I'm going to do everything in my power to keep our team motivated, to keep working, to keep building, and to get Arizona State where I know it's going to get to. Uh, Kenny, <clears throat> when you're trying to get any small wins possible, did you think about just trying to score at the end, 20, ball in the 28 with two timeouts? I, I did. And... Uh, the issue is we're so banged up at the O-line that attempting to do that, if we had one more injury, uh, we couldn't practice. I mean, that's just the reality of how it is. We won't have a scout team to practice. Uh, so we really couldn't, when Max went out, uh, we really couldn't take a chance uh, to do anything that would cause an injury at this point. So, yes, I wanted to score, but my better, smarter side told me it's okay. Like, let's get out of this game. And uh, when I saw Joey get rolled up on with about three plays left, two plays left in the game, I said that we're done because that, that would just would have been catastrophic. So is there any update on, on those injuries uh, or Tevin or Melquan or whoever? Uh, they're both getting looked at right now. Uh, I don't have any immediate update they both got got to go get some imaging on them so we got tevin bryce him uh you just mentioned uh then you have i, I mean a lot sorry i i, I my brain's kind of fried from that standpoint I, there, there's a there's a good amount were you uh, uh surprised that shamari was able to go after what happened to him no because that kid's tough 
I mean, that kid's a that kid loves the game. That kid's tough. I mean, that kid played really well. Uh, you know, through through what he went through at practice, and coming back the next day and playing. I mean, it's just incredible. Kudos to him.